Jack them up, boys. Hey, it's good to have y'all. Welcome to Silverado Cowboy Church, where Jesus, King of the Cowboys, and everybody's welcome. The reason we say that is because we want you to know that God is no respecter of persons. And we are glad that you are here today. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, when we receive the word, it's Jesus called it the washing of the water of the word. Uh, Paul also later on talked about the washing of the water of the word. I want you to receive the word today and to be able to put it into your life and and make use of it. Second Timothy 2.15 says, Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God. A worker does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That rightly dividing the word of truth means where you apply it to your life. I want you to receive the word today, be able to apply it to your life, and remember that God loves you. I'll talk to you after this broadcast. Uh, kids, just before you go, do we know the signs for... Uh, there, there's a kid's song, and I don't remember what it is, but it talks about how deep and how wide. There you go. Come sing it. Come lead it. Oh, come on. Anyway, I thought about that when we were singing this. I want to go, how deep, how wide is his love for me? Kids, you can be dismissed. Is that on back there? I need a little more, Scott, please. Glory to the Lord, Father, and praise to the Son. With his nail-scarred hands, he reaches out and tells me I'm the one that he died for on Calvary's tree to save my soul and set me free. What a wonderful embrace in his precious arms of grace. Do you know the Savior? I pray that you will give your heart to Jesus and he'll show he loves you still. As he died and was buried, he rose sin and disgrace he reaches out in love with his precious arms of grace in his arms of grace his precious arms of grace I find hope and peace Love's complete in his arms of grace. And as I look into his face, and I take my special place, I find that he wants to be in his arms of grace. Stay close beside him as through life's 
race you run and claim your prize in Jesus' name. The victory's been won as he died and then was buried. Rose to take his place at the right hand of the Father. He intercedes with loving grace in his arms of grace. His precious arms of grace. I find hope and peace. Love's complete in his arms of grace. And as I look I take my special place. I find that he wants me to be in his arms of grace. I know that he wants me to be in his arms of grace. His precious arms. couldn't sing that for a long time after Keith Brown passed away uh, because that was his voice in the background and his brothers, uh, both of his brothers. And uh, if you don't know the account of how that song came to be, Keith's first wife had uh, passed away. Actually, she uh, he came home and just found her dead. And uh, he said he lost a $6 million uh, business. He had a three-month-old daughter, and he was laying on the couch with his back out. And that's where that song came from. He said, I looked up, and I saw the Father's arms of grace. And all of a sudden... I knew life was going to be okay. And, uh, and you knew Keith Brown after that, uh, long after that, maybe uh, 30 years. Um, first time I met Keith, I didn't think I was going to like him. Uh, he got sent to me by a guy that, let's just say, wanted control of everything I was doing. Uh, at one of the places I was doing ministry. And uh, he set Keith up to do music for me, thinking he would gain control of the place. And uh, I went on home, and this is how Keith and I got to be best friends. And he calls me in the middle of that weekend. He says, what are you doing? I said, I'm loading the car. Where are you going? I said, I'm leaving for three weeks. Uh, I'm going to, at that time, Kathleen and I had cowboy churches in uh, four different states, and, and I would make a round every, every couple of weeks. And uh, then we were going on to do a roping in Utah and some other places. And uh, Keith says, what time are you picking me up? And I thought, are you serious? He said, yeah, pick me up. And so I picked him up, and he spent three weeks in a car with me. And after that, him and I, you didn't see one that you didn't see the other for three and a half years. And I finally told him, I said, it's time for you to take your, your own ministry and go do. And I, I gave him the cutting horse ministry that I'd, I'd started back, which is where I first met him. And, uh, and Keith did a great job. Um, he called me every other day and preached three sermons to me every time he called me. But uh, what I knew is I knew that uh, he was the man of God God had sent to uh, help us. And so uh, 
He is missed. Um, he left a church in Idaho that I'm in charge of now. Um, and you can tell how many times I go up there. I think I haven't been there for two years. Um, I'm due again, but we'll, uh, we'll see how that works. I want to talk this morning a little bit more about baptism. Uh, I started last week. Um, I think I probably better get my glasses so that I don't stumble while I'm reading. I know that everybody appreciates that. Um, and, and if you didn't catch last week, you can uh, find it on the internet at silveraudocowboychurch.org uh, under the media link. And uh, Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4. I'm going to re be reading out of the King James this morning, uh, Brittany. Or Bethany, I'm sorry. She says, you can call me anything, just don't call me late for supper, right? That's what my dad used to say. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4 says, Who has ascended into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fist? Who, who has Hound the bound the water in a garment and established all the ends of the earth. What is his name and what is his son's name, if you know? Turn to Acts chapter 2, verse 36. And I'm sure that uh, she's way faster than I am at turning pages. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you've crucified, both the Lord and Christ. So his name is God, and, and his son's name is what? Jesus Christ. So we get into a place that we realize that what we're doing is we're still establishing, uh, and, which is where I finished last week, we baptize in the name of, Jesus said it, the, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and, and in the Holy Spirit. And Peter said that we baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We've established that the Father's name is Lord, the Son's name is Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is Christ. So it doesn't matter if you baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ or you baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You're baptizing in the same name either way. Um, Acts 2.32 through 36. So let's back up to the 32nd verse. It says, this Jesus... Now, this is Peter on the day of Pentecost. And he's preaching to everybody that's there and, and, and from all the lands because it was the time right after Passover. So they, they were all there for uh, uh, Pentecost is actually a uh, high holiday in Israel. Uh, and, it's, and we recognize it as the day that the Holy Spirit was poured out on all flesh. But it's the time that there's a... a uh, it's it's called the the first fruits. It's it's the uh, feast of first fruits is what Pentecost is. This Jesus has God has raised up, which we were all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, and He poured out. This which is, you now see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he says of himself, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand and make your enemies your footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel 
know assuredly that God has made Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Galatians uh, 3.27. As for many, as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So one of the attributes of baptism is we're showing the fact that we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So when were, were you baptized? See, this what didn't say baptized into water, baptized into Christ. And, and the, cr baptism in water is a symbol of being baptized into Christ's family. How were we baptized? By his blood. But his blood was shed for the remission of sins that we might have eternal life. That we might have eternal life with him. We're promised eternal life. But where do you want to spend your eternal life? I want to spend my eternal life with him in, in, in heaven, of course. Important revelation of God's name. Let, let me back up. Um, the triune name of our triune God was given to Jesus. All power was given to him. Now, how was it given to him? Because it was the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so we realize that that's how that triune name is. I don't try to, try to pretend to understand how God could be three in one, but I know that the Bible teaches us that he is. And so uh, we have to take... There's some things... We have to take by faith because uh, we can't understand that. If we look around at somebody, who do we see? We see that somebody. Uh, do we see their wife sitting next to them? Sometimes yes. Sometimes no. But are they one? The Bible says they're one. Even, even when uh, they're not here, we're still one with them because of what the Bible tells us that a uh a uh, son leaves a father and mother and joins himself to his wife and they become one. And that's exactly what it says. Well, our God's the same way. All power was given to him in Matthew 28, 18. And I know what it says. It says, uh, all power has been given to me. 28.18 says, And Jesus came and spoke and said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. The fullness of the Godhead dwells in him. Therefore, all that was essential of the fullness of the Godhead to be his. Fullness in the name of God is given until Peter revealed it at Pentecost, was not given until Peter revealed it at Pentecost. Because Jesus first died, been resurrected, and ascended to the Father. The Holy Spirit couldn't be given until Jesus ascended to the Father. And that's what happened here on the day of Pentecost. It's important, revelation in God's name in the dwelling place. Moses inquired after his name. Go to uh, Exodus 3, 13 and 14. I shouldn't go all the way back to Genesis. 3, 13, and 14 says, Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me, and they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, 
Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God said, build a house in his name, 1 Kings 8, 16 through 19. Now, all of this is established so that we can get into a place that we understand. I'm not just getting baptized just because the church says I should. We're looking at the Bible from, from the start to the finish. We realize that Jesus is shown from Genesis all the way to the last uh, chapter of Revelation. And each place that we look, we realize, now I have to establish first, and we do this sometimes. We get such a love for Jesus because that's our, our covenant to heaven that we forget about the Father. And without the Father, Jesus doesn't exist. We have to get in a place that we realize, who was it that, wanted to have a relationship with Adam, God the Father. He came down and walked with him in, in the cool of the evening, it tells us. He even came down the day he sinned and said, Adam, where are you? He still wanted to have a relationship. So what he did through Jesus Christ was reestablish the fact that now I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. John shared a couple of weeks ago that now I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm also the holiness of God because that's what it tells me that we are. Does that mean I never fall short? Yes, but does that change who I am in God, how God looks at me? No, it doesn't. I'm not supposed to go ahead and continue to do things that I shouldn't do, but it's okay that I have a covenant with him that if I do it, I've still got that covenant that I can say, God, forgive me. Thank you for, for loving me. Thank you for giving me your son, Jesus. And, and that's what, what we establish in this place. So, 1 Kings 8, 16 through 19. And God said to Moses, I am who I... Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to read that one over again. Since the day that I brought my people, Israel, out of Egypt, I have chosen no city... From any tribe of Israel in which to build my house, that my name might be there. But I chose David to be over my people, Israel. Now it was in the heart of my father, David, to build a temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father, Whereas it, is, it was in your heart to build a temple for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. Nevertheless, you shall not build the temple, but your son who will come from your body shall build the temple for my name. Now, where is that temple today? It's here. We know that that temple that Solomon built was destroyed. Why was it destroyed? Because God doesn't want us to, to look to a place. Is this, is this the temple of God here at Silver Auto Cowboy Church? No, it's not. It's a place we come to learn together to sharp iron sharpens iron. Uh, we don't have to come to church to learn. We should let the Holy Spirit lead and guide us as we read the Word, but we come to church because it tells us, forsake not the assembling together of yourselves, and that much more as the time comes. Why? Because it's important for us to encourage one another. To iron sharpens iron. Um, there's uh, Willie's here visiting today because he has coffee with us every uh, morning when I'm in town, Tom and Roddy and Willie and, and uh, Richard, we all have coffee together. But is that a place to, for iron to sharpen iron? Sure it is. Anytime we assemble ourselves together, iron should sharpen iron. We should be encouragers to one another for whatever that is. Um, I don't even remember what it was. I shared something with, with Willie one time, and it was just about something that 
I saw, and that's iron sharpening iron. Did we talk about the word? No, we talked about how to get through life. Isn't, isn't that right? It was something we did, and I don't even remember what it is. It, um, and it doesn't matter what it was. It matters that this time, and when we talk about ba baptism, we're, we're bringing a symbol of the time that we're putting the old life behind. Does that mean I'll never fall short again? Absolutely does not. It means that I'm going to strive not to. I'm going to strive to be like him. But am I going to fall short? I'm pretty sure that as long as I live in this skin, there's times that I'm going to fall short. Um, I hope that's not a new revelation that your pastor thinks he might fall short. I, I, if you don't think you are, uh, tell me how to get to that place. I can tell you I'm having a blast in life. I'm having a blast in, in what God lays out for us. I, I told Kathleen I enjoy what I do. Uh, and that's not because I like to preach. I just enjoy what I do. And I always have. Um, does that mean that's the only thing that I want to do? It really is the only thing I want to do. Does that mean that's the only thing I'm ever going to do? Never been the only thing I did. I've done a lot of different things at different times. What Does that mean that I fall short of what God's called me for, to? No, it doesn't. It means that He has rounded out my life in ways and that's what we should expect we should expect to be people in the world today that become an example to those around us so that we can have relationships with them you may be the only Jesus somebody ever sees and I know that we hear that a lot of times but one of the things we realize we really may be the the catalyst that brings somebody to know Jesus Christ by the way we act, the way we talk, the things that we do, and, and the fact that we, we focus on what the Word says in our personal life. And when we per focus on that, and as we look at that, it's important to realize some of these things may not seem like they have to do with baptism. And, and, and as I read off of this, this comes out of the Bible school book that I wrote. And so that we can... Uh, we can focus on what God wants us to do. Uh, Acts 7, 44. Uh, we're going to read 44 through 50. Acts 7, 44. Our fathers had a tabernacle of witness in the wilderness. As he appointed, instructing Moses to make it according to the pattern he'd, he had seen. Our fathers having received it in turn, also was Joshua brought with Joshua into the land, possessed by the Gentiles, whom God drove out before the face of our fathers until the days of David, who found favor before God and asked to find a dwelling for our God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house, However, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands, as the prophet said. Heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? His hand has not made all these things. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16.
1 Corinthians 3, 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If you remember it, uh, Jesus rose from the dead, told Mary uh, Magdalene not to touch him because he hadn't been to the Father yet. But then that night he came back from the Father and it says that he breathed on the disciples and told them to receive the Holy Spirit. That was the minute of their conversion to Christianity because even though they had followed him all that time, they couldn't be saved until he w was raised from the dead. So once he was raised from the dead and they believed that he was the Christ, that's what it, t what it takes. It takes if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe that God raised him from the dead, then we'll be saved. And that's all it takes. And so we get into that place that we realize, you know, that's the covenant that we have with him. I become the temple of him, of God. In baptism, we're going to show that same thing. We're going to show that we have been the, the temple of God. Uh, Bethany... This is going to be out of the Amplified. Ephesians 1.23. We're going to show God's people, we God's people, house the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and because of this, we are filled with the Godhead. Ephesians 1.23 in the Amplified which is his holy body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. For in that body lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete, who makes everything everywhere with himself. Ephesians 2, 6, still in the Amplified. And he raised us up together with him who made us to sit down together, giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly sphere by the virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the Anointed One. And last one, uh, Corinthians 2.10. I'm sorry, Colossians 2.10. She's waiting for me to say 1st or 2nd Corinthians. It was Colossians 2.10. And you are in him, made full, and having come to the fullness of life, in Christ you too are filled with the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and reach full spiritual stature, and he is the head of all rule and authority of every angelic principality and power. So what have we been given? We've given d d dominion over all principality and power. When we are baptized, and, and as we get baptized, we realize that Being a symbol of his, and we looked last week, it, it is uh, death on the cross, and his burial, and, and being in that grave in that time, we go completely under the water. I, I always remember something that uh, uh, Marcel Ledbetter asked uh, Uncle Versi. I know you'd think, I can't believe the preacher's going to quote. Jerry Clower. He said uh, he was going to marry a Methodist girl. And uh, the Methodists just get the head wet. And uh, he said, uh, 
Dad, he said, no. If she goes into her knees and then we sprinkle the head, is that okay? He said, no. Because, you know, Marcel Ledbetter was a deep water Baptist. Uh, he believed they, they needed to be uh, uh, submerged. I'm telling you why we believe submerging, okay? And uh, he said, how about if she goes into her waist? And he said, no, that won't do. How about if she goes into her neck? And then we sprinkle her head. He said, no, that won't do. Her, she has to go all the way under. Marcel Ledbetter said, uh, I knew it was just the head, so sprinkling's okay. I don't care how you get baptized. We believe in full submersion. And the reason we do that is because of what Jesus did in the River Jordan. Nothing else. It's, it's a symbol of burying a man. We only uh, baptize believers. The reason we baptize believers is because if you haven't been, you know, John the Baptist, his, his uh, baptism was for the remission of sins, repentance, not forgiveness of sins, not the full remission of sins. But once Jesus died and then was uh, buried, rose from the dead, went on to heaven, now it's full remission of sins because Jesus said, my blood was, has been shed for you for the remission of sins. When you look up remission of sins, it means full payment as if it never happened. We get into that place that we realize that what I'm doing is I'm giving up a full uh, picture of Jesus not only being buried and raised from the dead, but that I have made a decision that I'm going to follow Jesus Christ. And, and again, that doesn't mean I'm never going to fall short. It means I'm going to try not to fall short. Um, I believe this. I believe that... Uh, one of the things we need to not do is be afraid that we might fall short. Because Jesus said this. He said, as a man thinks, he also is. And so if I think I'm going to fall short, I'm going to continue to fall short. If I, think, if, if I confess that I'm going to be more like him every day, I'm going to be more like him every day because I'm going to strive to be like that. I've already been made like him. I've already been... It says in, in 2 Corinthians 5.21 Who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we get into that place that we realize that I'm, gonna, I'm in Christ. Jesus said this and in one of these verses we read quoted that we... Uh, we had the Godhead living in us. How do I know? How do we? How did was the disciples able to write that in the epistle that we we read? Because Jesus said, "My Father and I will come and make our heart inside of you, or make our home inside of you, and we will never leave you or forsake you." And then He said, "I won't leave you orphans. I'll send you the Holy Spirit." To remind you of things I've said and things to do. So we get in a place that we realize that we're going to have that, excuse me, um, <laughs> I was wet in my throat so I could quit coughing. So we get into a place that we realize that we're going to have uh, a place for God to dwell. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to share this first because, it, and maybe there's somebody here besides Raul that would like to be baptized today. We're baptizing Raul uh, and whoever else wants to. We have to only do one thing, and that's say, Jesus is the Lord of my life. So I want everybody to say this with me out loud. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I confess him as my Lord. I believe that God raised him from the dead. 
if you said that for the first time or for a recommitment, that just means that right now you made Jesus the Lord of your life. And that's all it takes to be baptized if you want to be baptized. You didn't have to come become prepared. I will tell you, if you got your car keys in your pocket, take them out. <coughs> I say that because uh, I baptized a guy. And he handed me my car keys because he had borrowed my truck. And uh, you, you don't want to get that key fob wet. Um, so, Raul, if you... Did you bring a change of clothes you want to change into or just ready to go? Okay. Well, as you've watched the, the broadcast, uh, you need to know that uh, God loves you and cares about you. I hope today that as you listen to this, you'll see that his plan for you is to succeed in everything that you do. Anytime we look at the Word, we realize that the Word, uh, when it, it comes alive inside of us, that we begin to get what it says. As we get what it says in us, then we become victors in life. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, today I hope that you'll make that change. Paul said this, he said that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that we'll be saved. For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the heart one believes unto righteousness. And what that means to you is all you do is you say, Jesus is the Lord of my life. I believe that God raised him from the dead. Now that can't be just something you say with your mouth. You have to, you have to believe it in your heart. You have to know that God loves you and cares about you. Because that's the truth. That'll make your eternal destination heaven. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That life was Zoe means the God kind of life. And I want you to have that today. I want you to know that that will cause you to rise to a new level. For those of you that are believers that have been watching this, uh, for any of you, and if you made a change today, make sure you write to us on that uh, address and website that you're going to see in just a minute so that we can send you some stuff. We're excited that God came alive inside of you. If you're believers and or somebody that wants to give tithes and offerings today, there's a button right there on that website that says tithes and offerings. Uh, one of the websites, if you're on it, it says donate. Just push that button. It gives you the opportunity to give to the ministry realizing that you're putting good uh, seed in good soil that is plowed, is fertilized, and watered, and I expect you'll receive a crop. I want to pray over you right now. Father, I thank you for those that made a decision today to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Father, for those that give, I ask you to give back to them, pressed down, shaken together, and running over to make room for more. And Father, we ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus and by his blood. Amen. Remember, Jesus loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord.